Adobe just released a new AI Firefly 3, new model, new versions inside the Photoshop. And we're going to look on all these improvements, very impressive improvements inside the Photoshop and how we can use it as a photographers or retouchers for ours. So I will go show all these updates. And most important, I will show you some how the engine actually work with uh, some limitations and how you can get the best performance out of this because i know some people may say it does not produce sharp result does not produce enough details so there's a little secret to this and i will share this with you to understand how this engine work and let's go ahead dive in so first what we have right here it's an image and it's shot inside the disneyland the halloween and you can see we have a pumpkin so it's a nice looking uh, pumpkin everything but we have it people and you know like any other areas where we have a lot of people um, some parks are like when actually less people but it is fun and so what I want to do I want to remove this um, some people up front of the pumpkin well it's kind of easy in one case to do you just go ahead and select option right here we'll just go select the persons there you go and as we're selecting you have it menu pop up on the bottom in its context of menu if you don't have this you can go windows and just right here checks contextual taskbar so it will appear next we go generative we won't do anything fancy no typing words right now just click generate this is will connect with a server send back and forward and will generate and that was done before so you will say what is different in this version the version is a quality of the image because it still has new Firefly 3 but beside that what is also happening here it is where you can control quality so what I mean by control quality let's look right here first I'm going from three different options and for example I kind of like this option but I look don't like chair here so the new things what they add on this if we're going over our properties of generation you notice we have several icons pop up and one up it is increased quality increase like sharpness details detailizations and it's work for the big ones but what i'm interested in it is next with the three dots here and this is if we click it's come up and says good poor so we can report but most important generate similar so this is new let's go ahead and click generate similar and it will take what is already generated and have it low variations if you work with stable diffusion or mid journey mostly in the mid journey you probably notice they have their options when you're growing generate to create variation subtitle or strong in this case we are just creating similar to mid journey very uh, slightly variations and look we remove this chair but we still have it all those pumpkins and of course we can go check through all of them and preview well you know what i still like actually you know what i yeah that is better but this one is look nice yeah let's go with this one so new we removed the chair and it's look all good well here's a some small tip and secret for you the ai what is using in firefly it's have some limitations and limitations staying in how many nodes and other things think about pixels so the model is trained for about 1024 by 1024 size so if we take on the square and we'll just create this is about model well about this size 1024 like right here it's not sorry it can be square it can be uh, long this way or this way or can select others so it's kind of try to generate in this rectangulars and we have it about um, 1 million of 48,000 um, like 576 pixels I think there somewhere around there um, and don't think about them pixels think about them as a nodes which kind of work with AI so this is how many um, reference points or nodes can work and it's limited so if we have it bigger than that what's happening it's actually still generating in smaller but after it is upscale well let me show you what i mean by this even we say um we can collect all these points but i'm going to select for example i will select these guys here let's go just select here and it should be okay if we generate this way but what if i go and i also add and i'll select one here 
Well, it seems like it's enough pixels, but because square, it will be this large. So let's go ahead, generate. So we'll go generate right now. And if we're going and look a little bit closer after generation is completed, it's, it's going quite a bit fast, actually. They have a very interesting um, NVIDIA lab there. Okay, now let's go ahead and come closer. You can see definitely different. Look on this sharpness. See how sharp it's going here? And it's missing there because what is actually happening? It is, I select top and bottom, and it's actually select all of this territory like this. You see 2,000, 4,000 pixels, yes? And it's try create there. And after it's upscale and it's lose sharpness because it is too large area cannot process. It's like create the small image and after upscale to here. So instead what you want to do, if you have it all of this, you need to separate them and try to build with small things. For example, let's go just example right here. We just only take these guys, okay? Right there where I want to remove them. We won't select anything else. So we'll split on smaller tasks. Okay, and let's try that one. And look, now we have a perfect sharpness. See, same, same sharpness as other ones. So it does way better if you create it around this size. So this is performed the best. But of course, sometimes come question and says, well, look right here, I have a big area. Well, if I'm going, and let me show you, if I go and select like, for example, this area right there, or you know what, let's say, I will select smaller area. So 124, so what, what if I just select this one and try generate? Well, what's happening, as I think I can tell you ahead, it will analyze and says, hey, it's a person with legs. We won't remove it, this, but we extend legs or make them look very funny, like it's some uh, runaway genetic engineering. See, like right here, this is what happened. Well, it's not necessarily what we want to do. We want to remove those guys, yes? So instead, what we want to do, we'll just go and select what we want to remove a big area like right here. See, we'll go oops, select. Well, I don't want, you know what? Maybe eh, let, let me select again. So I'm going right here. I'll go right there, select this, go right there like this. So I have a big selection. There you go. Now let's go generate a fill. We'll do this. Well, this is definitely bigger zone than 1024 by 1024. And as a result, even we look down here where the brick is a sharpness. So let's, uh, when it's done rendering, let's look, you can see it's a last sum resolution right there. You see like this area, you definitely can see it's last sum resolution, but there is where we're going to restore. For example, right here where is last, we actually again can go and select that area just like this and click generate a field. So you can generate over generation and this will analyze and will restore our details. So you almost add first removing and I know it will be a little bit blurry, but look now, see how it's restored. Look on this resolution just overall before and after you can see how it is as sharpness. Of course, it's a generative AI and I'm just using very examples where they can add some stuff. We can put it this in the description if we want to do a little bit better. I mean, in a prompt. So if we want it, but generally you can see what's happening here, like right there. See how sharpness before and after. So you can select the details like right there, where is it definitely last of resolution, just small areas, generative and generate. So this is a step, if you have one large things to do, you can remove it and after add detailizations on a small areas, but as long as you keep it about 1024 by 1024 area. And this way it will perform much better and creating much better resolution. Okay. So let's, let's done this. And you know what? I still quite a bit impressive, impressed by this. Because, yeah, look on this. There you go. How it is restored very well before and after. You see how the sharpness a little bit restored. So done very good. And look, we remove the crowd. So it's become less. 
Of course, when you remove it, if you don't have a good reference or other things, sometimes it would replace with something that does not really exist, but it's tried to do its best overall. And of course, we if we want it, we can take this one. Notice also as I'm removing, removing I want overlap and I want overlap out of the object that I want to remove it. So we'll have it again, teeny tiny selections. Even we have it two right here, those and this person. Technically, maybe they can fit together in this resolution, but I wouldn't recommend to do this. Um, you said I have it three examples, yes. And what if you don't like it? You like one, but you don't like another. Then you kind of need to select between all of this. But in this case, you know, you just much easier. So I select like this. And now I'm ready to go to remove these guys right here. There you go. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I got his nose. Okay, let's go generate a fill. Generate one more time. And there you go. It's a clean, look at this, perfect removal. And there you go. Our old crowd is gone now. So we have a nice image that we can use it for thumbnails or anything. It just look very nice and I did not remove the flag pool just want to keep it there but you also if you want can remove so this is kind of old new things the majority what they updated it just increased sharpness which I don't like it it's create kind of artifacts but I do like create similarity so if you like in a way it's going you can have it in have this sub tile changes as well engine itself new Firefly engine 3 its model its work very good and you know the best way just let me show you so right here we have an image and if you remember before you kind of needed select area so in previous versions you need to select and after it's generated will come up so now you don't have it if you just have it empty you have a generative image if we click on this generative image you come up with a prompt you also have it some example inspirational of the prompts and we can use them it's just simple just click and right here you can see appear those inspirational prompt you also have it other used of reference images which wasn't before and also other ways how we can use the reference images but you can use them as well you can have it also different type art or photo so we'll go with the photorealistic example and we can also use a different type effects if you can preview all of these effects for example which way you want to go like for example if we um, don't want divine or something so we can uncheck but let's just keep it so you can have it all the stylizations and if you're familiar with stable diffusions or other majority mostly in stable diffusions you probably know this um, with the, like preloading different type of the models um, adjustments or filters or reference so it's kind of like that in there okay so let's go ahead well done and we'll just click generate it should be a little bit different because i select photo not illustrations and i select my images but we just reuse same prompt and again it's take a time and look on this quality it is stunning i mean literally it is stunning stunning quality this is original image size 1024 by 1024 and it's not even compare with model one because model one was like kids drawing this is look very photorealistic very nice and we can use this uh, freely in our commercials work well let's look what else we can do by images right here is an image of very handsome guy it's me and we can also select reference by images it's probably best way to show here so let's go ahead and select and I'm going to like select around the jacket. Um, you want just a little bit off so you don't want to go inside right there. We'll click on generate a fill and notice now we have this icon and icon says reference image. So it's meaning we can click and preload image that we want to use. So in my case, I'm going to use leather jacket here and we'll go click generate. So it's just yellow leather jacket it's like right there that I generated inside the mid journey just to test around and there you go you can see it is replaced it to use the reference image and using this leather jacket replace it so kind of fun easy and way to do and of course we can 
can replace with golden with any other ones you don't necessarily need just replace this this is again it's replacing by reference because if you remember it so right here is my image that i was using so this is all what i did i just gone there select image as my jacket here and there you go by reference you can see the similarity as putting in you know what let me actually open in a in this window so we can preview and right here you can see this jacket and this is my reference jacket same buttons zippers so they did a really good job as a reference well it, you know if you want to try new clothes or some sci-fi you can put it and see how they look and it's applied to them real good you don't necessarily need just use it clothing for this so let, let's try different so right here i have it myself and i'm just going over my face notice on the positioning on the head so i'm looking just slightly like turned to the camera and what we're going to do we're going to use it this guy just using ewok you know as a reference and have it fun with my face so same things generate a feel and as we're going right there you can see icon reference image Okay, and where is my right there? Let's go click generate as we're preloading. And you can see on top we have it our on the side we have it our reference image here. Also you can preview in your properties. And there you go. Five, four, three, two, one. There you go. Now I replace it face. Of course you can use a different photos, but it is using a work with a Position with position of the head, so it's, it was three fourths. It will rotate to three fourths. So it's have a very good reference to this, and you can have it very a lot of fun with this. Right there, you can see how it's going. Right there, see. Same positions on a head. Of course, uh, some eyes and other ones a little bit lower. It's because based on the face, but it is there. You go, turning myself to. Ewok. Okay, that is a work by reference. Let's see other options. And another option is I'm probably going to use it the most time now. Um, I'm working with a lot of YouTube videos and I'm creating thumbnails. Sometimes I need to take and extract. And previously I use it so many different. I use it pen tool to go extract perfectly. I use it masking, select, select subjects. Now it's actually even here pre-built so easy to do. Like for example, we can click remove background, just one click, done. I mean, it's it's magically. And look what cool other things, options appear here. Okay, it's called generate background now or import background so we can import different background and obviously to put it in but let's go try to generate this is new i open and uh, let's go have snow mountains um, dof depth of field yes maybe um, hmm, what else will have it snowstorm no, I, I think that should work for now. So let's go ahead, click generate. And now it will generate backgrounds. So before, if you remember, you needed kind of put it behind a mask here. You can do everything in one touch. And there, look at this. It's a matching colors. It's matching, analyzing colors, contrast everything and creating. Well, look at that. This is look like it was actually taking photo right there at that place. This is how well it does. And of course, I put a DOF because I want it for the portraits, but you can add sharpness in everything. But here's a one teeny tiny problem. So remember what I says, 1024, you have your limitations. And working with the background, it could be constraining. So you could use it inside the Photoshop. They have a very nice image upscaler with the new versions. Or you also can use it gigapixels so or personal. I use it because I think gigapixels prefer better quality. And I'll drop a link down below for you if you want to check. And also check my other videos where I did compare them side per side. Uh, why I think gigapixels perform better than Photoshop and upscaling. But again, you can render 1024 by 1024 or some around this. 
size, you know, because if you want to have it 16 by 9, you maybe want to a little bit wider, but you can render a great image going upscale them or even, you know, you don't necessarily need to buy there because you afterwards you can go even here, have an image upscale and maybe going with um, just doubling size. But be sure you're resampling, you're going to the preservation details too. It's a little bit better. Still be not, uh, honestly, not up to scale of uh, how uh, the gigapixels can do, but it's still be doing okay, but that way. And right there, you can see we upscale our image and then we're ready to use it to replace backdrop where we need it. Okay, let's look back to our image. So this is some of those tools that we can use it. The other retoucher, I can tell you that this option to replace, to remove it and re uh, change details, everything, it saved me hundreds of the hours. And it's meaning if it saved me hundreds of hours, I can still bill same amount to the client as I done before. Only now I need to spend fraction of the time. So it's meaning I have it more profit for myself with using right tools. I know AI may be scared word for some person, but as a programmer, I also understand how it's work. And let me assure that current current model of AI, it's not even come closer to have its sanctions or constant. It just only simulating and emulating human behaviors in other cases and it just it's a just a, another tool so don't be scared try to integrate in your work and you'll see quite a bit improvements in your work and i will have additional videos about full workflow with using ai on commercials image so you can kind of see how it's done how the retouching will going with this okay well thank you for watching this video hopefully you like it share like subscribe and we'll see you next.